Today we're checking out the Blue Eddy AC180. Blue Eddy reached out to me and asked if I would review this battery for the channel, so I accepted. These types of battery systems have become a go-to power source for many, and I wanted to understand why that is. This battery packs 1152 watt hours of energy under the hood and 1800 watts of inverter power. Let's dive into this battery and review the pros and cons of what it can bring to the Overland Traveler. Hey guys, Tyler with Independence Overland. So today I'm checking out another portable power station as they're called. And uh, these are new to me. I just did a review on a smaller one that's about a th uh, two thirds what this one is as far as battery capacity goes. But this one has a thousand watts more of uh, inverter power. I will be building another vehicle before too long. And I would like to have something like this integrated into it. But I'm trying to kind of judge what exactly, what size I want to have and what features I want to have. And I've never messed with these things. So I have the opportunity to review different battery stations. So I've taken several different offers and now I'm doing just that. The technology behind any of these battery packs, no matter what size, is incredible. The fact that you can get this type of a setup in a convenient box is great for like prepper use, for uh, natural disasters. If you live in a place where you have floods or you have tornadoes, stuff like that, throwing one of these in the basement for that situation is incredible. But I'm doing this from the perspective of overlanding. This is what people are going to instead of doing a proper battery setup, dual battery setup, house battery setup, however you wanna say it. I wanna see it for myself, see what they're capable of. I'm basically comparing this to my experience, which is having a dedicated battery system. And maybe that's why I'm having some hangups with these types of batteries, but we'll get into that more in a minute. So let's go over what this battery has to offer, the price, everything going along with that. And then uh, we'll get into the pros and cons of this battery. So this thing does have a cool feature that it's got a 15 watt wireless charger right on top of the unit. So you set your phone up there and it starts charging, assuming it has the wireless charging capability. That is a pretty neat little feature for the little shelf there, just to make some use of that flat space. So if you're sitting at camp or something, you can just set your device there and it'll do its thing. Things that I do like about this battery, it has a very square shape and I'm big on that because we have to fit this into a place in the back of our vehicle. I don't want to handle up here, that's for sure. I wouldn't even consider one of those batteries. And um, in this particular situation, it's very handy that it's just set up like this to where you can just grab this thing, move it around, and you can stack things against it. Your fans are flat on the side. So if you were packing this in and you had camp chairs and stuff like that, it ain't gonna work. You do need to make sure that the vents on the sides are open and clear of stuff. I do like how this is set up and then you could put some sort of a strap through here, like a rock strap is what I prefer. And you could anchor this down, which you need to anchor it down because if you get in an accident, obviously it's gonna be heavy. This feels pretty sturdy. Um, again, it's just plastic, but this doesn't feel as cheap to me as one of the other ones that I reviewed. It feels like, uh, it feels pretty decent. First and foremost, you have your four 120 outlets, um, 1800 watts. So this is a thousand watts more than the last battery that I reviewed. So you have your four USB ports right here, and then you have your single 100 watt uh, USB-C port, which I assume is in and out, just like the other batteries have. So you can actually charge it off of 100 watts, which will take a long time, but it's awesome that it has the option. Cause again, you can charge this with a MacBook charger, it would take a while, but it's there. And then of course you have your 12 volt port. We'll get more into this in a second. And then um, you have your input port that is this large, it's kind of like the DC5521 that some of the other ones have, but it's a bigger port. That's also how you charge it with uh, a car charger. And that's also how you charge it with the included solar cable. So uh, anyway, and it does come pre-wired for that with those connectors. Um, I personally use Anderson connectors but you can modify that however you need. You have your AC input and that's where you will charge this thing. And I was charging it, not because it completely ran out of battery in my test, but because it failed my test. So charging this thing, it does take, I think 1100 Watts input, which is actually pretty cool because it can charge really fast. We'll check the inverter here in a minute to see if it'll charge off of an inverter. I shut the charging off just so the fan noise doesn't drive you and I both crazy. Plugging this into your 12 volt charger in your vehicle, it's gonna allow 90 watts. That's what it was reading for me, which is gonna take about six to seven hours to charge this from 50%. That's a long time. You gotta drive for an entire day. So if you're doing trails and stuff, that's great. And uh, if you're gonna be in your vehicle and you can charge it all day long and you don't really need it for anything else, that's awesome. But bear in mind that whenever your refrigerator is running, it's gonna dock it some of that power that it's trying to intake. Um, and so you're kind of, you, you will get behind because these things just can't charge fast enough. That's what I'm finding. 
This can charge off of solar, 500 watts is decent, uh, but most of us aren't carrying 500 watts of solar. It would be a huge hassle to do so. If you had some on top of your tent and then an auxiliary uh, port that you could plug more into somewhere, like basically build a splitter off of this, then you could do something like that. But uh, even at that point, like you're gonna be limited on how fast this thing is gonna charge. So while this battery is not perfect, this battery does have an advantage based off of the last one that I reviewed. And the major advantage is that this one does not require a pure sign inverter to charge it. So I can charge this off of the FJ's built-in inverter. For a while it was charging at 650, uh, 650 watts. And then um, it was saying that it would take 13 hours to charge. After letting the, the inverter run in the FJ for about 10 minutes, all of a sudden it switched over to 400 watts, uh, 450 watts-ish. And then all of a sudden it said it was gonna charge in two and a half hours. It was making kind of a high-pitched weird noise that went away as soon as I unplugged it, but um, it, it said it was charging. So anyway, it was working. So this battery has an advantage over the last battery that I reviewed, the EcoFlow. So this is rated at 1152 watt hour. So this is about a third more than the last battery that I reviewed. I would consider this middle of the road. I would like to see more ports on it because it is such a large battery. And at this price point, I would like to see it have some more uh, 12 volt ports perhaps, or maybe even a few more USB-C ports. The USB-A stuff is useful. We all have plenty of those cables so we can charge just about anything. The, uh, the wireless charger up on top is pretty nice. And then the four outlets on it, I think that is more than enough with most of these batteries. I, I never see myself plugging in even three devices at a time, probably not even two, but uh, who knows what I'll do in the future with the new vehicle. But USB-C, I do think that this could use two or three different more ports and they probably don't do that because they are expensive ports to put into a manufactured product. But these 12 volt ports here, this is a very generic 12 volt port on here. In this port, um, I don't know what the deal is with it. I'll show you that here in just a second. I had issues with this. Generally what I've been doing with these batteries is I'll plug them into my Snowmaster 56D overnight to see how much energy it burns. The Snowmaster that's in the FJ is not the one that I used to test. I've got another one here at the shop and it's in more of a consistent temperature controlled environment. So it's a better test. Now, uh, I thought this was doing good when I came in here yesterday. I left it Friday night. I came in, checked on this and it was at like 78% power. And I was like, that's awesome. This thing's way more efficient than I thought it was. That wasn't the case. For some reason, the refrigerator turned itself off. I came back to a refrigerator that was about 55 degrees. So the 12 volt port on this battery is good because um, it's generic. It's like a rubber weather sealed one. And if something went wrong with this, you could replace it real easy. The downside of this particular plug is that it is a very loose fitting plug. And I don't know if this is why my refrigerator didn't run correctly, but uh, it didn't run correctly. So what I did yesterday was I was like, well, no big deal. I'll plug it in straight. I know nobody will be at the shop to accidentally bump it or anything like that because that was a possibility Friday night, but nobody else has been here. So I left it plugged in again. I came in today. It was at about 35% battery. The fridge had totally turned off again. I have no idea why it wasn't working with the refrigerator. It was working for, I guess, about 20 to 30% of battery at a time. So with this particular plug style, I thought maybe it was that. So I tried the same plug with more of a typical style and it is just a very loose fitting plug. It's kind of goofy. I don't like how loose fitting that is because that's where you're gonna plug your refrigerator in. But I also don't know that it was just a plug issue. I don't know if my plug fell out or if the battery just has some sort of a voltage issue to where it would not power that fridge for whatever reason. I'll charge this up and I'll plug this in again tonight, but so far it hasn't ran my fridge. And my concern is that something is going on with the electronics of this thing and it's basically turning itself off for some reason because of the voltage that a compressor requires. So if Blue Eddie reaches out to me, maybe it's a firmware issue or something like that, I'll pin it in the comments below. But as of right now, I have a battery that will not run a refrigerator for 24 hours. Not a big deal to me because this is an add-on to my system versus a standalone battery system, but something for you to consider. It's only fair that I do the lemonade test. And then actually this one's got more output, so we're gonna do even more than that. No whiskey in today's test. I'm in a professional environment, so I cannot do that. But we need to test it on the AC. And lemonade just sounds good right now. And I almost always have lemonade in the FJ. So we'll plug this thing in. I mean, obviously it was gonna work for that. Lemonade with slush. 
it's so nice. All right, let's try this with something else too. Okay, so this thing is running at 1500 amps and it has gotten hot very fast. I have it on the highest setting. Yes, you can use something like this and obviously I'm at 50% battery and I have 0.4 hours, a little less than a half hour to use this. Point proven, it works, does what it says. Okay, so this thing has this huge power output but it doesn't have very much capacity. So the only time you're really gonna be able to use the power output on this is again, if it's like home use uh, or you have a dedicated battery system in your vehicle like what I have, because that's gonna drain my battery so fast that I just really can't rely on it. Maybe you're using this just to power high output things like this, and then you'll let it charge off of your primary battery system or something like that. I totally get it. I'm sure there's a, an audience for this battery other than myself that'll actually find need in this. Low capacity, high output. Now, as far as this battery goes, I would like to see more ports on a battery this size, especially if you're getting over a thousand bucks for a battery. They need to have more ports than just one 12 volt port. That way, if you want to run some lights or something on it. And the one thing that this doesn't have, as some of the other batteries that I've been reviewing have, are the DC5521 ports, I think they were. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, some of the other batteries have basically a smaller version of this port that's an output, and so you actually get more output. This actually has the least amount of outputs of any of the batteries that I'm reviewing, but it's got, it's the middle of the road for power. So this needs to have more options for power output because if you're gonna have this thing, you're gonna wanna run more than just a few USB things, one 12 volt thing, and then some 110. That doesn't make sense to me why this doesn't have more ports on it. So I'm assuming that this battery is gonna be about twice the cost of the EcoFlow that I reviewed recently. Is it twice the battery? No, it does not have twice the capacity. It has less ports on it. Yes, it's got a good form factor. You can charge it from AC, which does make it a little bit more useful for a lot of you. But for me, um, this is again, just an add-on battery system. And it's only that once they fix the 12 volt port. So if the FJ for some reason did have a problem with my dedicated battery system, it sure would be nice to be like, oh, well, I'll just plug it into this. If it's not gonna even run my refrigerator overnight, my food's gonna go bad. So this thing gets points docked for that. So once the 12 volt power is fixed on it, assuming it can be fixed on it, who's this battery for? I think this battery is for, again, the weekend warrior. Aside from that, like, I mean, you really need to decide what all devices you have. If four USBs and one USB-C is gonna be enough, plus the 12 volt, but the 12 volt's gonna be taken up by your fridge most likely. So is this really even that useful for you? I wanna see a company build something like this specifically for overlanders. One that has like eight USB ports on it, multiple USB-C ports on it, and two ports here on it in a smaller package. That way at the end of the night, you can charge things like your headlamps, uh, maybe you got your GoPro or something like that, and then you can keep the fridge running, charge your phones, do all that stuff, and you can do it all at once rather than with something like this, you'd have to kind of cycle through your electronics. Personally for me, I plug everything in at night to let it charge overnight. I don't know how many of you do that. Seems like a lot of people would, and with the limited amount of ports on this, you really can't do that. So I kind of see that as an issue. So what's my final conclusion on this battery? I did reach out to Blue Eddy several times on the 12 volt port issue and have so far seen no real solution. Perhaps this only affects certain fridges, but I have no way of knowing that. Maybe a firmware update in the future will correct it, but as it sits, it won't power my fridge, so I personally can't recommend it. This battery is likely a great solution for home backup power, but for the Overlander, I just don't quite think it's there. Sure, it has the inverter, but that's an inefficient way of doing things, and the big sell on this battery is its massive 1800 watts of output, but with the smaller capacity, you really can't use it to its full potential, though it's nice to have it for short duration uses on high output devices. $1,099 is a lot of money, and for overland travel, there are better options in that price range. That's my opinion on this battery. If you disagree with what I'm saying, or you're just gonna buy it anyway, there are links below. It does help support the channel. I really do appreciate you guys watching, and until next time. As always, thank you so much for watching, and feel free to check out my other adventure, off-road, and overland-related content.